Welcome to the Dovetail Games Fishing Academy. It's a beautiful day here at the water's edge of the observatory lake. There's a slight breeze blowing across the water and the conditions are perfect. Before the lesson starts, have a walk around and get used to the controls. Well, it looks like you got the hang of it, which is good. Otherwise, it would have been a long day. We've got a number of pegs on this lake for you to set up your gear. You should be able to spot a peg by looking for a sign like this. For now, let's claim this peg and get your gear ready for fishing. The same peg as long as your gear is in it. Bear in mind, though, if you walk too far away and leave your peg unattended, We'll remove your equipment and allow someone else to claim it. OK, it's time to talk about your fishing tackle. Your rig and bait are just two of the tools in your arsenal to catch fish. Choosing the right rig and bait combination is essential to catching carp. When you're holding a rod, you can change your rig and bait by simply opening your inventory and choosing new ones. We'll explain how different setups work in another lesson. For now, just change your rig and bait to whatever you like the sound of. Close your inventory when you're happy with the tackle options you've chosen. Right, you've claimed your peg and you've got your end tackle set up. Next, I'm going to talk you through how you cast in dovetail games fishing. Start off by walking up to the front of the peg. When you're near the edge of the water, you should be able to open the bail arm, hold the line and get into a casting position. With the line held, you want to pull the rod back until the lead is behind you. But remember, keep the line held or the bait will drop. Now with the lead behind you and your arms straight, push the rod forward. This is the action you'll need to master when performing a long range cast, so have a practice swing to get used to the motion. OK, now you've had a bit of practice, let's try a proper cast. Again, pull the rod back until the lead is behind you. Now this time, when you push the rod forward, you want to release the line at the right time to get a decent cast. Have a go and see if you can cast over 15 metres. If you don't hit 15 metres on your first go, reel in and try again. You can gauge the bed type by feeling the vibration through the rod when the bait hits the lake bed. Knowing what you're fishing over is essential. 
you'll want to use rigs and baits that are better suited to the particular bed type. Unfortunately, the fish aren't biting at the moment, so let's reel it in and call it a day. Top stuff. We're all done for today. In this lesson... Welcome back for another lesson. I know you want to get on with things and catch big fish, but everyone has to start somewhere. Just like before, head for a peg and unload your gear. Now let's talk water trust. Take a minute and have a look at where you're fishing from. You can see there's a decent margin on the opposite side of the lake with some overhanging trees and some reeds. An ideal place for a carp to hang out. Almost anyone can cast a rod out and wait for the occasional fish, but it requires skill and technique to catch big fish consistently. That's where watercraft comes into play. One element of watercraft is looking for the visual cues. Keep an eye out for splashing, shows and small feeding bubbles. These all indicate that there are fish in the area and this is where you need to be targeting. Now it looks like there's a lot of weed over there. That'll make things harder. Weed is a fish's dream and an angler's nightmare. If you're using a bottom bait and you cast into weed, your bait will be hidden and the fish won't find it easily. It can also tangle your line and help the fish escape your hook. So, when fishing over a weed bed, try using something that sits above it. A chod rig would do the job. Don't worry if you don't have one, you can just use mine for now. But I want it back at the end of the lesson. When you're ready, cast out to the weeds on the far bank. Don't worry if you don't hit them first time, just reel in and try again. Although try not to do that too often or you might spook the fish. <sighs> Result! I'm going to get a bit technical with you now, so pay attention. Your line is attached to a reel on your rod and all reels are fitted with an adjustable drag system. The drag system is what sets how much resistance there is for the fish to pull line out from the reel. So if you set it to its lowest setting, the fish will pull the line out easily and swim further away. But if you set the drag system to its maximum, the fish won't be able to pull line from the reel at all. It's locked up and the fish is going nowhere. Let's put that into practice. Try increasing the drag on the reel to 90%. Okay, if you had a fish on, it would find it difficult to pull line out from your reel. Bear in mind though, when you have your drag set this high, you're adding more tension to the line, and that could lead to losing the fish. To monitor your tension, take a look at your drag system. When you have a fish on, you'll be able to see how much tension there is on the line by checking the tension gauge. Blue shows you when the tension is low, and red shows you when the tension is high. The two indicators at each end are there to show you when you're in real danger of losing the fish. You don't want to be in here, so adjust your tensions accordingly to get out of the danger zone. 
With that in mind, let's lower your drag to something a little easier on the fish. Something like 30%. When the drag is set this low, the fish will be allowed to take the line with a little bit of resistance, but it shouldn't be enough to lose the fish. The trade-off with setting the drag too low is that the fish can easily take the line and head for things that could snag it. You really want to keep the fish away from reeds on the bank and weed beds. If the fish makes it to those spots, then it... Now, if you're lucky enough to have a fish on and you're reeling it in, my advice is to keep an eye on the fish's movements and what's around it. Constantly check the tension to make sure you have enough to reel in the fish, but not too much that it escapes. Think you're ready to take on a fish? You've got a bite. Time to see if you've been paying attention. Start off by reeling in to tighten the line and help set the hook. But keep an eye on the tension. If you lose this fish, you'll owe me a new chod rig. Now stop reeling for a second. You don't want to add too much tension to the line. You can pull the fish in by literally pulling the rod back and then reeling in the slack line. Try it. Pull the rod back over your head. See the tension on the rod? Now move the rod forward and reel in the slack line. Careful now. When there's too little tension on the line, there's a chance of the fish escaping by throwing the hook. But when there's too much tension, well, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen. New chod rig for me. Let's get this fish close to the bank so we can net it. You can move the rod to the side if you want to pull the fish in a certain direction. That's your tactic for pulling fish away from weed beds and guiding the fish. Quality stuff. You're almost ready to net this fish. Just reel it in a little closer. Don't forget to pull the rod back and reel in the slack line to bring the fish in properly. Here we go. Make or break time. It's time to net the fish. Start off by picking up the net. Check it out. You've caught yourself a beautiful common carp. You've also bagged yourself some experience and tackle points. Let's get this little fella back in the water and we'll call it a day. And that's it. In this lesson, we've covered how to reel in a fish, how to manage your tension, and you've even bagged yourself a quality common carp. Nice one. Thanks for listening and I look forward to seeing you on the back. Right, here we are again. Now, this time, I'm going to teach you a pretty advanced technique for catching fish. Don't worry about setting...
One of the best things about stalking for fish is that you aren't restricted to your peg. You're free to walk around the lake, look for fish and cast out to the optimum location. Give it a go. Walk up to the edge of the lake and cast out. Before you cast, take a step back and think for a second. If you're fishing in the margins and you're trying to get a fish in at close range, you're not going to bang out a massive overhead cast now, are you? Casting overhead to short distances is not the way to go. Instead, you want to change your casting stance to an underarm cast. It's a short-range cast and is ideal for fishing in the margins. Performing an underarm cast is the same as an overhead cast. Just hold the line, pull the rod back, and when you're ready, push the rod forward and release the line. It looks simple enough, but it's actually pretty tricky. Have a couple of practices to get used to underarm casting. And just in case you were wondering, you can still change your stance when you're preparing to cast. For this lesson, let's keep using the underarm cast. Oh, hold on, I've spotted some fish over there. Quick, reel in and shift it over there before they spook. Remember, when you're fishing in the margins, you want to keep an eye on the water and see if you can spot the fish in the lake. When you see a fish, you know instantly that you want to be... Look, right there. Can you see them? I'm guessing there's a few doubles over there. Quick, cast your line out and hopefully one of them will take it. Oh, is that a bite? Ah, nice one. Now it's just like before. Keep an eye on your line tension and reel your target in. Check that one out. And it looks like you picked yourself up some more experience and tackle points. We're not ending it here, though. Let's put this one back and see if you can catch another. You're on your own this time. I've taught you everything I can about stalking fish, so let's see if you can use those skills and catch one for yourself. Landed! And that's a lovely looking fish too. Shame it isn't a massive one, but catching these lovely looking carp is still great fun. Okay, let's get to it. Baiting with a spod is the topic of this. First of all, get yourself set up on a peg, then you can equip your spod.
Good. Now, take a look at your selection of rods. You should be able to see that you now have a spod available. Just select the spod and you'll switch to it. It's that easy. Now, let me explain what a spod is. That rocket-shaped thing on the end of your rod is the spod. It's loaded with bait, and each time you cast and it lands in the water, it's dropping its payload. That is what you want. It's basically saying to any fish in the area that the buffet is open for business. Give it a try. Cast the spod like you'd cast a normal rod. Try aiming it somewhere in the middle of the lake. Usually you want to bait an area a couple of times, adding loads of food to the area. To consistently cast the spod at the same distance, you can set the line clip. The line clip limits the amount of line that's allowed off the reel, and by setting the line clip, you'll hit the same maximum distance every time. Try setting the line clip, reel in, and cast out to that exact area again. That's the one. To unclip, simply unset the clip when the spot is in the water. Job done. Now, let's switch to a hook bait and get it out there before the frenzy begins. Okay, now for the difficult bit. You need to cast your line out to the baited area without the line clip. I'm going to teach you a little technique that should help you to do that. What you want to do is set yourself up to cast as far as you can, but when you release the cast, hold the line again to slow it down. This will slow the speed of the line coming off the spool and should help you to guide the rig to the same spot as your baited area. Give it a try. Do a powerful overhead cast and as you release the line, hold the line again to slow it down. When you're slowing down the cast, you can also move the rod to the side to pull it in that direction. It's really handy for guiding the bait in the direction you want it to land in. in you landed that perfectly in the mix it doesn't look like the feeding frenzy started yet so i tell you what instead of standing like a spare part with your rod in your hand waiting for a bite you could put the rod down and give your arms a rest ah oh, isn't that better you're probably wondering how you know if a fish takes the bait don't worry you see that rest your rod is on connected to that is what we call a bite alarm when you've got a fish on, you'll know because that thing will start beeping away like there's no tomorrow. Whilst you're waiting for a bite, you could go for a wander and see if there are any fish nearby. Or you could just relax and enjoy the tranquility. Hey, there you go. Quick, 
Get your rod and pick it up before the fish runs off with it. Go on now, you got this. Reel that fish in. That's another beautiful common you bagged yourself. You're getting the hang of this, aren't you? Well, that's all I can teach you about baiting. Let's put this one back and call it a day. 